Hey, I'm the Castling Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2020 Career Mode, episode number 40. This is stage 5 of 6 at the Tour de Romandie, because there hasn't been much action over the previous stages. So, this one, it is a mountain stage, but only just. We have four climbs all here on the back half of the stage, though. This one, 6.3 kilometers, 1,500 meters of climbing at a 7.8% average gradient. Most of that climbing done right the in the middle, not, as it starts easy, finishes easy, and pretty tough. One rider already out the back. You can also see that Grant again and Jermon, our two sprinters, probably will not make it over this climb, but we are at the halfway point, 3k to go. This is that steeper section. Nobody's dropping back too far, so they're they're hanging in there okay. But Granigan is done, so he's starting to slip back, and we can now see uh, Germont also starting to go backwards. Those guys will likely not regain contact unless they're still here over the top. 1k to go for Granigan and Germont, but definitely see Granigan done. And Germont also dropped. He's close enough. Germont might. It's survival of the fittest and recover uh, to, favor those to the field, the but There's probably not. Ooh, Lopez got dropped, but there you go. That's back together. And Lopez, you were protecting somebody. Who was it? Let's figure that out. Uh, Marino's going to be protecting. Well, let's go ahead and do this. And is it going to be Rainsford or Rodriguez? We have it 76-76 with about the same on stamina resistance. We have a 74-75 with a little more stamina and resistance, uh, but I'll take the climbing advantage of Rainsford. And also, as we set ourselves up for the next three climbs, let's also pick up the pace a little bit. So the Peloton, just 57 riders, and it's starting to come back together. German is not that far behind this, but it's already, uh, the descent's done and over with, and German and Grant again in these next two groups on the road behind the Peloton, it's, it's a little too late. Cat 2, 5k to go. It's 7k in total, 5% average gradient, and we are starting to eat up a lot of the breakaway as they are now uh, falling apart. Lopez nearly done. Let's go ahead and gel up for him. So 100 riders left over the top there. And most of this will not come back, those that are getting dropped. Just two riders left off the front. And if you remember, we stand in 10th place overall with Tantoni. There are a lot of really good riders at this Tour de, de Romandie. So 10th place is a pretty dang good spot for us at the moment, especially considering Tantoni had a uh, pretty poor race day condition last time. Today, well, he's got a plus four, so uh, expectations are a bit higher today, and especially with the level of the climbs, we are going to try to get a good finish with Tantoni on this one. Uh, I forgot that I needed to get water. Shoot. That was my time to do it. 25k to go. Now we're starting to, starting to see an acceleration. So first off, let's put that to 85. Lopez. Lope okay, Lopez is going back because he's done. Uh, Rainsford, I don't know why you're so far back, but uh, let's make sure you don't slip back any further. Lopez will set you to auto. He was protecting somebody. It was Tim Tony, so Rodriguez. Take over that now job, please. Are asking serious questions of the riders in the rear as more of them are left in the wake. 29 riders just got dropped. Peloton down to 68. Definitely a group at the back that is slipping out as it gets smaller and smaller. It's going to be difficult to break away now. All right, Rainsford recovered. Here's another big acceleration. This is the leaders. By Simon Yates. This is something I want to counter with my three guys that remain. Uh, Moreno is done now, so we'll leave him out of it. But we're going to set these three. And it is Tantoni following Rainsford following. Rodriguez and Rodriguez. How are you behind Rainsford when you were protecting him? That's not very good protection. I uh, will set you to a 91 here initially. Uh, Moreno, let's go ahead and set 
you to auto. You will get dropped in a moment. That's five riders temporarily off the front. 56 in tow. Maurice Bookman, Muhlberger in chase mode. We're going to go over the top here in a moment, so I'm not too worried about losing a small gap to those guys, as I do think having these three, or at least two left at the end, is going to be more important so now it's the than descent. It's that less small gap that those guys are going to pick up. But it's more stressful as the riders must choose their trajectory well and maintain a good 16k position. 16k to the go. Uh, love to grab water. But We've got 15 kilometers happen. to the finish line. Alright, so Rodriguez, good flat rating, really good downhill rating. And you know what, let's, let's just stay put here. These guys are doing the work. Why should I waste Rodriguez? Alright, 10k to go. It's back together. There we go. Chase complete. 26 riders in this final group. I have three guys. And two of them are in pretty dang good shape right now. Those front five wasted a lot of energy trying to get away. That's going to make this final climb a little more difficult. Here comes the next acceleration. It's Lopez, Roglic, Thomas, Alaphilippe, Caruso all going. And they sit back up. Rainsford, where are you at, buddy? There you are. All right, we're still there. Okay, gel up for... Oh, crap, crap. Oh! Oh, man. I clicked... Uh, I, right there. I clicked right there. Edge of the box. Uh, let's get that back up to 890, and let's go ahead and start moving forward. It's 5K to go, and Rodriguez, I just lost a few wheels for no good reason, unfortunately, but uh, Rodriguez, let's pull this over to the left. There we go, where we have some space. We're seeing an acceleration by Muhlberger. Wow, that's okay, one attack that's going to leave a good view in its wake. We'll be done here in Counter just a second. I'm trying to not go too hard too fast. Oh, something steady rains for it's going to go just a little bit harder. Three and a half K. And this is what most of the riders are not going to be able to counter, as I have Rainsford and Tintoni now. And you can already see the acceleration is done. It's 2.8k now. So I'm going to speed up a little more Rainsford. He's got a good pace. He is hurting Tintoni slightly for this. So let's slow that back down. We want to be... No, no, no. Counter -attack now we go. Yanks. Now we go. Alright, Rainsford. He's going to finish on his own. But Tintoni... 1.2k has more energy than most of these guys. I'll set him to a 90. S oh, come on, Tantoni. And the final sprint is off. Who's going to be the first to All the right, line sprint today? it out, sprint it out. He's in the but final grouping. Alaphilippe's going to take the win. That's Alaphilippe for you. But a great win in the sprint we're of the right there in the top seven. Lopez, Thomas, Yates. Bookman, Tintoni, and Martinez. And then we see gaps. There's the next three. Palace, Roglic, Kelderman, Rainsford, 11th. Good result there. And here is Rodriguez. Can finish themselves. Go backwards, though, at the moment. 29th on the stage. Here is Moreno. Also up there. Well placed. Alright, so we're on to the final stage. And... It's a time trial, which is really, really bad news for Tintoni. However, it's flat right now, but then you round that corner, and oh, we go uphill. It stays above three, it goes below for just a little bit, so there's your time trial rating again, and then we're right back above three for this next couple of city blocks. And then it's going to flatten out for just a moment, and then we're right back to uphill pretty much all the way through the first sector. Second sector to the finish is mostly more than three degrees downhill slope. So your time trial rating really does not matter as much. Rodriguez is a great time trialist. However, he is not that great of a climber. I mean, he's got an okay rating with that 70 plus, but Rodriguez, he's got a good downhill rating. 
He's got a good time trial rating, but he is not going to end up with one of the best times, primarily because it's not using the time trial rating as much as it would under most circumstances. And therefore, Tentoni's got a shot of putting together a pretty decent time today. So Rodriguez has a little bit extra to push here to the end. And he gets to the finish line just 25th place. And that's that really, it goes to show just how much the climbing and downhill are going to matter today. So Tentoni could put in a respectable time and hopefully he can hang on. You can see right at the top of the standings, Lutsenko, not a time trial as Kwiatkowski is, they all climb. That's what these guys have in common at the top of the standings. In fact, the entire top 10 are all climbers, first and foremost. So keep an eye on Rainsford as he approaches the finish. 50th at the first check. Just a 72 on the mountain. Okay time trialist, but otherwise not offering much. Rainsford will push to the end this final kilometer. And let's go ahead and focus now on Tantoni to the finish, who is about two-thirds of the way up the climb and looking pretty good. Rainsford crosses 51st. So right now my best time is Rodriguez at 32nd. Time of trial combined with the climbing helping. Tantoni, I'm going to push a little harder over the top here as that is our strength. Back down to 76. He's got a pretty decent amount of energy left here, so we can push pretty hard towards the end. Thomas goes to the top ahead of Dennis. Right, not quite back to neutral for Tentoni on the energy. We still have another little bit of downhill. There we go. Back to neutral as it flattens out around that corner. 1K to go. Come on, Tentoni. 39th, losing a minute 5. So he does lose time. Not a time trialist. But that was still better than anybody else on this team. Time. Even better than Rodriguez, who is a strong time trialist. So Tintoni is going to have a time that's going to hang in there with a lot of the competitors around him, but he is going to lose time. So I would imagine he'll slip out of the top five, should stay in the top ten. Roglic ends up with the best time ahead of Thomas Bookman, Alif Leap. Alif Leap, not a time trialist, but incredible <laughs> with the gliding and downhill that uh, he goes and hangs on to the wing. Roglic, Yates, Bookman, Thomas, Lopez, Pallas, Tentoni keeps 8th place overall by a single second over Keldeman, a single second behind Paulus. Latour is 10. So there you go. Top 10 finish for the race. That's a good result. Not great though. Just good. But considering that he is an incomplete stage racer with just the recovery and mountain ratings and nothing else to go with it, that's pretty dang good. It's always nice to see when something, even anything, goes together. And we have this moderate, kind of balanced across the board bike uh, frame from BMC that's, like I said, it's kind of a mix of different. So there's times where it's useful. It's not a specialty bike, but it had some work done, and the only difference was it was feeling mediocre instead of very bad. Everything else was the same. I sent them back to work, and look at this now. Arrow, plus half star. Lightness, plus half star. Comfort, plus half star. So everything picks up a half star, half star across the board, making it that much more useful. Very reliable, and even the feeling is a little bit better. So. I'm very happy with our upgrade on that. We now have a choice for something else. Uh, what to do though? Well, the only thing we have left that's not four starred is our climbing bike, though it's pretty good. And now this one's only a half star behind it and adds in one and a half for arrow. So there is definitely times where we would want to use that bike instead. So we might as well go for the SLR, and we'll go for, oh, all we can do now is minor changes based with the time. All right, so we're at the Giro d'Italia. It's stage number one, and we're not gonna see too many stages of the Giro. 
Uh, reason being, I have no GC contender. I have no KOM contender. I have a few guys capable, maybe, of getting a breakaway victory, but it's so unlikely until at least the final stages. The only thing that I brought that has any chance, any sort of strength, is my sprinters are all here, which the Giro does generally. I haven't looked at the profile, actually, uh, but the Giro does generally provide enough, and we're going to speed up here for the final and really only uh, contested climb of any sort, short little category 4 climb, 4.8k, uh, 4%, so nothing to do it to it, but we want to make sure we don't drop back too far. 21k to go in the stage here. Uh, anyway, four sprinters, well, and a fifth support sprinter all here. So uh, we're going to try to contest the sprints. We're going to see if we can't steal a single sprint stage. That's all I'm going for. Uh, I'm going to quick send all the rest of the stages, though I will be careful on how I set up the assignments for those uh, for my other guys that are here, my three non-sprinters, to try to go as free elements on all those stages, and if we're lucky, they could maybe steal a result. Uh, but now, with 12k to go, we are all set, and I'm going to go ahead and prepare the team, all, s well, all but one rider anyway, uh, otherwise I'll, the 171 are all here in the peloton, and with a little bit of fatigue, uh, but nothing to worry about. Now, Imata Toglu is... Uh, he's got a virus. It's been a week, so he should be over it in the next few days, but it will definitely affect him on these early stages. If it was a two- or three-day race, I would have left him at home. But being that it's a three-week stage race, there's no reason to do that when he's going to be sick for a matter of days. Uh, but that does mean his race day condition is down. Owayan and Alves Machado are both down. We do at least have a plus one on Granigan and a plus two on German, which means there's a decent chance that German would be the go-to guy today. But no, he's still not strong enough. I think Alves Machado is still, yep, still much stronger. And Botoglu is going to be the lead out and then German. And that means Granigan is the obvious other choice. And Orion. And then from there, how do these three guys look? We have Rainsford. I'm guessing Banajek, because of his flat rating and stamina, is going to be the consistent one. And it's Lopez, who's the weak of the bunch. There you go. Gel. Gel. And that's to the back. Lopez. All right, here we go. We're going to get things moving. It's 12 kilometers, so I don't need to attack this too hard initially. We still have a ways to go. Uh, there's one little hill with a bit of a downhill to the finish, so the positioning will the be important. Let's go ahead and gel up for you. Alright, Lopez just getting us to the front. But we're down to 7k now. And we're going to go full speed from here the rest of the way. So Rainsford, Lopez didn't quite get us all the way to the front, so we weren't clear. But now with 6k, it's time to gel up for everyone. How are we looking on that little hill? Oh, we're right at the top of it right now. So we really do need to get uh, Rainsford bringing us out front. Full 99. It's only damaging Banajek and Hawaiian slightly. Uh, 4k to go with this many riders. I'm going to sprint this far out. These guys aren't going to have anything doing. And he spurts so away from the group. He's going 3k through to go. In fact, at 3k to go, uh, Banajek, you're going to just follow. And I'm going to go straight to Orion. Uh, otherwise, we're just wasting our time. So we get into the sprinters. Uh, Grant again, 2.3k, so... And, and it's technical. It's going to be very fast. Hey, Jermon. We're going much earlier on these guys. Um, the finish was a little too easy. Amanatoglu and... Let's sprint everyone now as we come around. Jermon in a good spot. Granigan's in a good spot. Ekoff with a 82.80. Holy cow, where did he come from? He's, uh, I, I mean, I'm familiar with the rider, but dang, has he developed in a couple seasons in this game. Monotoglu, Alves Machado, still in a good enough spot for a result, but I don't think we're going to be grabbing a stage win here. 
Montetoglu is certainly close. Uh, he six, smashed victory in that is mass it? sprint finish. Yeah. He can thank his six, teammates. Six, seven, him out in perfect conditions. and 12. Uh, so Ekoff, Grunewagen is here. Machete, Bonifacio, uh, Denise. We could beat most of those guys on a good day. Sam the Bennett, Jakobsen, Vanderpool. Not too many sprinters here. That's good. Cobrelli is here, though. Uh, Trentin. I could beat most of those guys most days. Alan Banajek. Beat most of those guys most days. Ekoff with that 82-80 and Grunewagen. And Sam Bennett. Right? Those three in particular are going to be difficult to beat. Any given day, I could probably beat one of them if their positioning is wrong. But beating all three of them, that's going to be tough. So squeezing out podiums on stages might be just about the best we're able to do. But hey, we'll, we'll give it a shot. Vuelta Madrid. Quick sim through that, through the three stages, two punchy stages and a sprint. Uh, Tintoni solidly never even had a podium on any stage, but he finished in the second group on the fir first stage, finished in the first group on the second stage, combine that up, and he claims fourth overall in that one. So we're on to stage number three. There's four riders in the break. They've got just a minute. We have a single categorized climb. It's cat four, and it's a little bump in the road. There it was. It's over with. It's done. It's behind us. We have 40k to go in the stage. Everybody is pretty fresh. We have not had much of a pace. This uh, breakaway has been an easy one to manage within the group, though. I am expecting that pace to pick up now in the final 25 kilometers, so I will pick up my pace just in case, yeah, you can see even at an 86, 87, a couple guys are starting to blink red, but we're cruising through on this one. Now, uh, I have, like I said, no GC contender, and everybody lost time on stage two, which was just a relatively straightforward, punchy stage. Uh, 9K to go. I'm not going to use everyone here. Let's go ahead and set this up. I, I got a little quicker to the end than I thought. I thought we still had about... 15k and I looked and whoa hello there we go so uh Elvis Machado looking really good today so that's that's our go-to uh Monotoglu yeah not good news on him Monotoglu has that virus has taken a step for the worse uh after stage two yesterday uh the virus is now persistent so it's going to stick around a little bit longer maybe half the tour uh but it, with what we're here for, he's still of use to us. We might as well. If at some point we get done with the sprint stages, I might have him drop out if it's still persisting at that point. So what's next? Grant again, Hawaiian. And the order on the other three was pretty straightforward. That's Banajek, Rainsford, and Lopez at the front. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. Uh, we're gonna go straight to Banishek. The teammates of the main sprinters are strong. Not 99 because we need to breakaway, get out front so quick. Just end up in a mess. Okay, gel for you. That nice flat rating is bringing us up here quite quickly. Uh, we can actually even back off just a little bit, but everybody else go ahead and gel up. Uh, these two. Be kind, set them to auto. All right, Banajek gets us out front. It's 5K to go. I did a little bit of... Oh, he's already done. Uh, so on to Orion. 4K to go. We're actually out front this time, so that's nice. Beating these sprinters are going to take every little bit I can get, and it's going to involve going early, and so we do. Uh, and normally you want attacking. to wait, but again, five sprinters. We up. want to maximize and get them as far out in front, keep them as far out in front, force it's the other guys to go early, fast. that's the idea. Uh, I did too much damage with Banajek by starting late. Uh, let's see, are we even in position for anything? No. Uh, Monotoglu, yeah, nothing left, red bar here for the end. Uh, I definitely went too strong too early, That's that was a mistake, but it is going to take something Chicago like this. I just, I, we were already down on red bar, 
because of Banajek rolling out at a 97-99 uh, early on, not being in the right position in the first place, I waited too long. If I had started back at about 13k, just easily rolling through with Lopez and Rainsford first to get us to the front, the other guy still would have had full red bar. Banajek took half that red bar down because he's got that excellent pace. By that point, right, in the process, I should be able to roll through with a 95, 96 with Banishek out front already and not do the damage. Instead of rolling through at a 99 and those they guys going, what are they for me? So, uh, we'll try again next stage. Winning a stage here is going to be a bit of a miracle. and My goal is to win one. I really don't think we have a chance to do any more than that. We are not good enough in sprinters. None of my guys are even in the top 20 of the sprinters at this race. The entire top 10 favorites, the lowest is a 78-79. Most of the top 10 favorites are 80 plus. So uh, I'd say the first six or seven on the list are 80 plus. And then that next three or four are 78s and 79s. My best sprinter is a 75. Okay, so we are uh, we are wanting for pace, and that's why we're gonna have to a be out front comfortably, and b we're gonna have to go very early and force them to go early. If we force them to go early and they run out of energy early, where my guys are still out front by that point, and um, still with energy then they've got a chance straight up head to head zero chance right an 82 is going to beat a 75 every time one bike length in front of them isn't going to do it they're going to have to be A without energy to have a chance and where we still have energy and or B we're going to have to split them off but we will never beat them head to head we can prove it right here. 82, 83, 82, 81, 81, 80, 80, 78, 81, 80. Vanderpool has 83 acceleration, but not the sprint. But he's got the 81 stamina, res uh, 82 resistance, and a 78 flat, making him a unique contender. Trentin is nowhere near that list, but he is still well above his 77, 76. It's still better than anything that I have. 78 stamina, 73 resistance, 78 flat, all to go with it. Cobrelli is in that 10 to 20 range. Uh, Mazzato is still better than my guys, but similar. And ninth, yeah, no problem. We got sixth last stage. I could get sixth or seventh every single stage, which will do nothing for us. Or I go for broke and go for a stage victory, which is what I'm trying to do. So 6th or 7th again and again won't amount to anything. We're not going to win a points classification. Uh, we're not going to get any, any credit from the sponsors. So I am going to take a risk, be bold, and go for broke. This stage I screwed it up. Next stage I might screw it up again. But instead of the conservative route, which is going to net nothing but a 6th to 10th place, maybe squeezing into the top 5 once, we are going to try for the stage victory. That's the only thing that's going to matter to the sponsors. Nothing else will. So that's what we aim for. And the only way to do that is to be aggressive. Uh, that is going to do it for this episode, though. We've got quite a few stages still, and I, I suppose... Uh, before we wrap this up, let's take a quick look and see the Giro and see how many sprint stages we have. So that was stage three. Uh, we're not going to see anything on stage four, but we have five. So there's one. Uh, six, no, thank you. Uh, we won't succeed there. I didn't bring strong punchers. Seven, yes. Time trial. Twelve. Thirteen.
and that's a time trial. So we have four stages to go for broke. So next episode uh, will definitely contain those four stages. At the same time, we only have uh, two other unimportant races that are going to be happening, and then we also have our training camp for our leading Tour de France guys. So next episode should contain all four Giro d'Italia sprint stages that remain. And like I said, we're going to be aggressive. We're going to go for broke and try for a stage victory, uh, which would be a good accomplishment for the team. Uh, I do have a number of guys, uh, what, three of them, that are at this race that are nervous by getting their first Grand Tour. Uh, it's good to get that out of the way. So this it's a bit of a throwaway tour for me, but we'll go for broke and see if we can't steal a stage victory. After that is the Dauphiné and a period where things are going to really matter. Tour de Suisse, uh, Valois Belgium Tour, all in that period. So we have multiple sponsor objectives and not terribly small ones. Tour de Suisse is not one, but as a world tour race, uh, it's something we'll, we'll aim for. And then national championships, and then of course the granddaddy. So big period upcoming. The Giro normally would be, but again, make up of the team and how overloaded we are on our calendars. Uh, it's only so much we can do. So we go for the sprint and go for broke. That does do it for this episode, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.